is a demo about automated model selection with NIME. In this demo, I'm going to analyze some car accident data uh, taken from the FARS website. The goal is to predict death in a car accident given all the other circumstances. And I'm going to show uh, some data reading, uh, then the visual investigation of this data. I'm going to perform some evaluation of the data set quality. Uh, I'm going to apply a few techniques for dimensionality reduction and a bit of data preparation. And then I'm going to move to the automated model selection. In the automated model selection, I'm going to build a bag of models. This bag of models uh, includes um, a custom ensemble model um, made by native uh, machine learning NIME nodes. I'm going to include uh, the random forest, which is another native uh, node in NIME. And then I'm going to include a decision tree trained in R as an example of tool blending. Let's have a look at the workflow. Uh, here you can see the data that I have downloaded from the, from the website. I downloaded the data from 2009 to 2013 and uh, they have different data structures. So I actually use for the analysis only the data between 2011 and 2013. In the workflow, we start with the data reading where we read the three tables, accident, vehicle and person. Uh, after that, we move into the visual exploration of the data, where we check the statistics of the different features in the data. We check the uh, correlation uh, across columns in the data. And we also uh, display a scatter plot and a bar chart just to see how things are distributed in the data. After the visual investigation, using a tenfold cross validation, we perform an evaluation of the data set quality. If the quality of the data set is estimated good enough, then we continue with the analysis. If the quality of the data set is uh, estimated to be poor, so it doesn't pass our quality criterion, then we prepare an error message saying that the, the data set is not uh, general enough and we cannot perform the analysis. On the analysis branch of the workflow, we are going to perform some dimensionality reduction. Three techniques are used. One is based on the percentage of missing values. The second one is based on the, uh, the variance amount. And uh, the third one is based on the correlation between columns. After that, we perform some pre-processing, mainly to clean up columns, maybe to convert types and things like that. And now we are at the clue of our workflow, which include uh, an automated model selection. The automated mod model selection includes a bag of models uh, with a random forest uh, and an, an ensemble model that I have built from a decision tree, from a naive bias and from a logistic regression, all trained inside NIME. Uh, a decision tree trained in R and imported into NIME, and then a current model, which I don't know what it is, but it's uh, supposedly available in a hypothetical application uh, which analyzes this data. Optionally, I could have also included an artificial neural networks, and I also train a k-means uh, node just to show that it's possible, even though I don't use both of them, I don't use in uh, the automated model selection part. Finally, in this last part, I collect the messages, either the error message or the success message to be displayed on a web browser if my workflow is running on the NIME web portal. Let's have a look in more detail at the reading data meta node. The biggest problem here was that the data comes in a DBF format and NIME does not have a native node to read DBF format. So what we did, uh, we used the foreign library in R to read the data set and we imported into NIME. It was actually pretty easy. Um, I mean, it worked immediately, no problem. And now the visualization part. First, we check some statistical variables. Uh, with the statistics node. You can see here some of them, the average, the standard deviation, and also you can see a roughly drawn histogram for each one of the features. Then we might want to draw a scatter plot. Here there is one uh, where I draw the driver height uh, versus the driver weight. Uh, so you can see the colors represent the different years. 
uh, then we might want to see the distribution of accidents across uh, United States states. So you can see very prominent that the number of accidents is very high in Texas, in California and in Florida. Uh, with this information, then we might, might want to proceed with checking the linear correlation across different pairs of columns of the data set. The blue cells in the linear correlation matrix indicate the correlation between two input columns in the data table. The more intense the blue, the higher the correlation. We move now into the evaluation of the data set quality. To do that, we use a cross-validation, a tenfold cross-validation procedure. We measure the average and the standard deviation of the error produced by the 10 runs of the cross-validation. Uh, if the ratio is lower than uh, a given threshold, then we accept the quality of the data set. Otherwise, we reject the quality of the data set and we stop the analysis. The decision uh, is made by this uh, case switch node that enables one of the branches depending, if the, uh, depending on if the quality of the data set has been accepted or not. Let's move now to the dimensionality reduction and pre-processing. We use three techniques for dimensionality reduction. The first technique is based on the, on the percentage of missing values in each column. This node counts the number of missing value for each column. This node calculates the ratio of the, miss the number of missing values with respect to the number of rows. And this node decides whether the column has to be kept or rejected. Let's check now the other two techniques for dimensionality reduction. The first one is based on the calculation of the linear correlation of two highly correlated columns. One is refused. The second technique is based on the calculation of the variance. Columns with, with two low variance are also removed. Did you notice the deprecated node? A deprecated node in NIME are nodes from an older version of NIME. NIME is very proud of keeping back compatibility with older versions. So this is a piece of a workflow that I imported from a previous version of NIME and it's still working in the more updated version of NIME, even though it's indicated as deprecated. And now, finally, to the automated model selection. This node contains a bag of models. For the bag of models, we trained first a random forest, then a decision tree in R and imported into NIME, then uh, our own ensemble method using a decision tree, a logistic regression, and a naive bias, and we imported the model file from the previous run. Optionally, we could have included an artificial neural network. We did train it, but we did not include it in this bag of models. We just trained it to show that it's possible to do. Let's check the training of the random forest. The tree ensemble learner node trains the random forest with all the parameters for the random forest. And the tree ensemble predictor takes the model trained by the, by the tree ensemble learner and applies it to a test set data. The predicted values feed an ROC curve, which is going to define the area under the curve as a, a performance measure of the model. The model generated by the three ensemble learner is converted into PMML and imported into a data cell in NIME. Uh, the data cell is then joined with the value of the area under the curve generated by the ROC curve node. So at the end of this meta node, I have a model in a cell and then I have its corresponding area under the curve in another cell. Let's see now how to import an existing model into NIME. We use the PMML reader node to read a PMML file. The PMML file contains a PMML model. The JPMML classifier interprets the PMML model and scores it against the test data. Performances of the model are quantified through the area under the curve of the ROC curve and then joined together with the PMML model like we have done for the random forest. 
let's see how you can build your own ensemble model now. In this meta node, I have trained a naive bias, a decision tree, and a logistic regression using native nodes of NIME. The resulting PMML models have been converted into data cells of a data table in NIME and concatenated together. Then finally, this node, the table 2 PMML ensemble, uh, is the node that takes uh, the, sequence, the sequence of PMML models and transforms them into uh, an ensemble model. The PMML ensemble predictor uh, uses the, the ensemble model to score the test data, passes uh, the results to the ROC curve for uh, the, the area under the curve measure, and then again the model and the area under the curve are joined together. The last model is the model that we train in R. Do you see the little arrow here? That means that this is a linked meta node. The template of this meta node was written by somebody else and it sits now in a repository on the NIME server. Uh, I have used it, I've linked this meta node to the template and uh, therefore I can use it, but I cannot change it since I'm not the owner. Um, so here is the content of the meta node. If you see the R learner node is the one that calls R and uh, um, has the script to train a decision tree in R. That's the script. Okay. So after training, the uh, model uh, is imported from R and it's converted into PMML like all the other models and then it's uh, scored in terms of area under the curve of an ROC curve and then uh, the, the, the model and the area under the curve are joined together like for all the other models. All the models are then concatenated together, all the predictions of the models are then all joined together. The predictions are going to feed uh, ROC, an ROC curve node. The concatenated models are going to feed a meta node, which is going to sort the models in terms of area under the curve, and it's going to select the one with the highest area, uh, area under the curve, so the best. Uh, this is the model that is going to be written instead of the currently existing model uh, and its performances are going to be exported into uh, the message for the web browser if the workflow is running on the NIME web portal. Let's have a look at the final results on the ROC curve. You can see that the random forest has, has the highest ROC curve followed by uh, all the other models. So everything seems to have worked correctly. And now that our workflow is finished, we are ready to put it into production. We just move it onto our server on the cloud. And now we are going to schedule this workflow to run on the server every day in the night and to send me an email at the end of each execution run. The workflow has now been scheduled to run every night.